In today's video, we're going to be discussing accessing the unconscious mind and the role of psychedelics in that process, whether or not you need psychedelics to access the unconscious mind, and spoiler alert, you don't. Uh, and we'll be talking about where psychedelics fit into this and what it means to access the unconscious mind, how you can access the unconscious mind without psychedelics, etc. So if that interests you, if you want to know how you can get into those places in yourself where the healing needs to happen, then join me. Okay, so let's just get right into it here. So I want to start off the bat here with a really important message for you guys, which is that I want you to understand that if you're someone who thinks you need to take psychedelics so that you can access your unconscious mind, so that you can get into those places wherever the repressed wounds are and process them, I want you to understand that that's simply not true. You do not need psychedelics to access whatever needs healing in yourself. You do not need psychedelics to access your unconscious mind. And in this video, I want to explain why that's the case. And I want to help you understand a little bit more the relationship and the role between the unconscious mind and healing and psychedelics. Okay, so, but if you're not going to watch the full video, because I know I ramble, maybe you don't like my presentation or whatever, just take this message with you. You do not need psychedelics to access your unconscious mind. Uh, there are techniques, there are skills, there are modalities, there are whole approaches. And really, when you understand that, you can access what needs healing, you know, when it's appropriate to do so. So that's my message to you. I hope that makes sense. So with that being said, let's unpack this a little bit further. And by the way, really quick, just want to say, bear with me today. I'm a little bit brain foggy as I'm shooting this. So if I ramble a little extra or I'm a little grasping for words, hang in there with me. I'm doing my best. Okay. So as someone who's trained in hypnosis and hypnotherapy and NLP and generally these modalities that are more focused on the unconscious mind, and as someone who has a maybe a more extensive personal history of psychedelics than a lot of psychedelic therapists, I feel like I have kind of a unique angle to speak to this from because this territory is really where my training and a lot of my life experience is. So like I just said in that last section, I really want you to get that accessing what needs accessing is not just a function of taking a psychedelic. You don't need a psychedelic to get there at all. And 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 this is something I really want to impress upon you here. Uh, but if you're going to use psychedelics, it's not about dose. It's not even necessarily about which medicine. It's about knowing how to interact with your nervous system. Spoiler alert, I just made a course about this, link below. It's about knowing how to interact with your nervous system in the right way. It's about the right approach, the right relationship to the parts of us that are holding the content so that the, these parts of us feel safe enough to open and start to share whatever the wound is and start to move whatever the held energy in the wound is. I hope that makes sense so far. So accessing is more about our relational approach, about building trust with these parts of ourselves, about sending safety signals to these parts of ourselves, about helping the parts of us that are carrying the wound feel like it's a safe space to unfold and unpack whatever that is, much more than it is about hypnosis techniques or uh, therapy techniques or, you know, cognitive techniques or even psychedelics. It's, it's the psychedelics do kind of facilitate seeing this stuff more clearly. It kind of makes it more vivid. It's like turning up the saturation and brightness on these low level signals in our nervous system. But the using a psychedelic to get there can, can have some real side effects, which I'll speak about too in a moment and also isn't required. Okay, so what I've been finding as I've been refining this approach that I've kind of discovered here with people I teach in the course is that when we are related to in the right way, whatever is ready to heal in the nervous system, and that's an important point, whatever's ready to heal, whatever the nervous system wants to let go of and wants to process is often really close to the surface. And it is, you know, often once that safety signal is there and it's ready to go, it'll start releasing it. It'll start unpacking it. It's really, really common for me in sessions with clients for them to go, I have no idea where this is coming from. It's just bubbling up. I'm suddenly having epiphanies. I'm suddenly having memories. I'm suddenly having things move. Where did that emotion come from? And it's like the thing just starts moving 
with the right inputs. And this is sober. This is not, not clients in an altered state. This is just regular coaching sessions with me. This is what happens pretty frequently. Okay. So there is a relational approach that we have to get right that creates the right safety conditions for the unconscious mind to go, uh huh, this is a good moment for me to open up and start to move this, right? And it will start to move and it'll start to self heal, right? So I really want you to understand that it's not about dose, right? It's not about which medicine, right? But the medicines do make it more vivid. And they do sometimes facilitate a softening or smoothing, right? So I've said this in other videos. I'm sure I'll say this more, and I'll probably say this more explicitly in a video. The way I think of the role of psychedelics in a psychedelic therapy session or in a self-healing session is more like a psychological lubricant, right? It's like it's something to help the gears move more easily or for things to kind of soften enough to be easier to work with. I don't think we want to think of the psychedelic as a crowbar, right? We don't want to use it as something to pry open the parts of ourselves that are not ready to, you know, to be addressed, right? We don't want to use the psychedelic as like a sleeping potion to make the guards of the castle asleep where so we can slide through and break into the castle. That's not really right relating. That's not really compassionate. That's not really self-love. That's not really benevolent, right? That the undertone of that approach is kind of manipulative, is kind of a little violent sometimes, right? And so I want you to get that when we use psychedelics in that way to try to kind of crowbar our mind open or force ourselves into whatever content our mind is repressing, I see this as a hypnotherapist as, as, as unskillful therapy. There are a lot of therapists out there who believe that defenses are just something to be bypassed and forced or dominated or pushed away so that you can get to whatever the vulnerable aspect is. And I personally think that's really unskillful therapy. I think that that comes from a therapist who doesn't understand how the unconscious mind works, who lacks attunement, who lacks the, uh, the relational awareness of all the parts and how to approach all the parts, and from a therapist who is really kind of misunderstanding how to work with the unconscious mind. It's so much smoother to slow down and create a safe space for the unconscious mind and let it show you or tell you what it's ready to work on, right? It's looking for, are you listening? Are you paying close attention? Are you picking up my cues? Are you picking up the little subtle clues I'm leaving of what I'm wanting to heal here? And when we follow those clues and when we follow that in the right way, things just start to open and unfold, not unlike a flower unfolding, right? So this is a metaphor I use a lot with my clients. You know, that unskillful therapy approach of crowbarring your way into the unconscious mind, it's kind of like trying to rip a flower open before it's ready to bloom. And if you do that, obviously you destroy the flower, you get no fragrance out of the flower, you don't get the full color and beauty of the flower, you get a premature flower that's now kind of, you know, ripped apart, right? It's a bit of a brutal metaphor, but that's kind of how I see this approach of trying to crowbar your unconscious mind. Instead, it's much more about right relationship. Okay, so I've kind of peppered this all in in my description here, but hopefully so far this is starting to make sense. With the right relational approach, you don't need psychedelics to get at your unconscious content that needs healing. You can do that sober, you can do that uh, awake too. You don't even need to go into a trance and be in an altered state of consciousness. You can do that through a conversation with the right attunement, the right relational approach, the right attention, okay? So hope that makes sense. So that's the first point I wanna make here. Second point I wanna make here is psychedelics, yes, are useful for amplifying the unconscious mind, right? and kind of turning up the brightness, turning up the saturation, making it more vivid and clear what's happening in the more subtle layers of our nervous system. But we want to use that skillfully. And really, I think of psychedelics, again, another point here as lubricant, right? It, they're not, it's, the psychedelic isn't the thing that does the therapy. It's the thing that facilitates therapy going more easily. 
if that makes sense, right? So, but with a right approach and this lubricant, things can be very smooth and things can unfold very easily, right? Uh, I also think that, again, someone who's trying to crowbar their way past the defenses is coming from a wrong relational approach and very likely to do damage. And I think of this as unskillful therapy, quite frankly, just from my point of view. Uh, some people would say, well, you know, you're not a licensed therapist. How dare you have that opinion? Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, but this is this is what I see over and over and over. It causes damage. It causes blowback afterwards, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, so then, you know, I guess from here, let me explain a little bit more about how I see the role of psychedelics and, you know, how you can start to access stuff here, right? So what does this look like? What am I explaining here to you? Let me kind of unpack that a little bit more and we'll wrap the video. Sorry about that. I lost my train of thought there for a moment. So I thought it'd be interesting to share with you guys a bit of how hypnotherapists think about the unconscious mind, or at least some hypnotherapists. It's uh, Hypnotherapy is a whole huge field with multiple schools of approaches and thoughts and different styles, just like any other form of therapy. So I want to be clear that not every hypnotherapist thinks this way, but this is the way that I really like to think of it. And it's a very simple way of understanding the unconscious mind as was taught in a course to me by one of my heroes, John Overdorf, who is a master hypnotherapist. So the way he describes it is very simple. Basically, everything that you're currently aware of, that you're currently thinking about or paying attention to, is your conscious mind. That's what's in your conscious mind. All the other information that your nervous system is experiencing and processing that you're not currently paying attention to is, by definition, your unconscious mind. And so it's almost like there's a filter outside of which is all the rest of the data that we experience, and that's our unconscious mind. And then there's whatever is inside that filter, which would be what is in our conscious mind or our conscious attention, right? So the unconscious mind includes all the things that are happening biologically in your body. It includes all the memories that you're not accessing, but your kind of brain is in touch with or is has available. It includes dreams projections, misunderstandings, it includes body sensations, it includes everything that you're not focusing on. Let me give a little example here, a little hypnosis, like just a little playful moment together. So I, I'm about to mention something, right? So, and you, it will be in your unconscious mind until I bring it to your attention here. So I want you to just notice right now the feeling of the bottom of your toes, right? assuming you have toes, and if you don't have toes, notice the feeling at the back of your hands right now, right? Now, before I bring this into your awareness, that's in your unconscious mind. But as your attention goes to the bottom of your toes or the back of your hands, then suddenly you become aware of it and it's, in, it's now in your conscious mind. So accessing the unconscious is really about becoming aware of all the things that our body might be registering that we're not currently aware of, right? So it's it's the it's a moving of this data from the unconscious to the conscious or past this filter, if you want to think of it that way. That's, for all intents and purposes, the most simple, clear, effective way to start to discuss the unconscious mind. Are there different theories about different layers and types of unconscious mind and blah, blah, blah? Sure, yeah. A lot of that's theoretical and maybe less practical than what we need. But uh, that's basically the unconscious mind in a nutshell. So let's talk a little bit about accessing and how to access whatever it is that needs healing, because that's probably the whole point of why you're watching this video and the whole point of why you're interested in psychedelic therapy. And you know, this idea of accessing stuff is probably the whole reason we're having this conversation. So let's kind of get to that really quick. Okay, so how do you access whatever it is that needs healing? So if what I'm saying is true, that you don't need psychedelics to access the unconscious mind, that we don't want to necessarily force our way into whatever is being repressed that needs healing, that we want to approach that from a relational standpoint and from the right relational standpoint, right? Where do we begin? How do we start? So from my perspective, and this is in the free course, link below, it's in the full paid course. This is one of the core theses that I'm operating from these days as a coach and a hypnotherapist and supporting people in psychedelics. One of the core ideas here is that the unconscious mind is always communicating 
through little subtle kind of bids for connection, little cues, little little hints about what it's ready to heal or what it, it's unresolved around or what it wants to process more or bring to light, right? So we want to start with the assumption here that the unconscious mind is already communicating and our job is to listen and pay attention for what those communications might be and then to meet those communications in a non-judgmental way where we are building connection. So the precondition that allows the unconscious mind to unfold itself and open up is this space of safe connection, right? I mean, it's just pretty obvious. Like how easy is it to uh, express and be vulnerable and let your emotions flow if you're feeling unsafe and disconnected, right? Doesn't really work, does it, right? So the precondition here is safe connection which means we need to create safe connection with ourselves. And we need to create more specifically safe connection with our unconscious mind or with the parts of us that want to heal. So when our unconscious mind starts to breadcrumb these little clues, these little, little hints, and sometimes it's a body sensation or a sudden wave of an emotion arising or a thing that you're ruminating on out of the blue or, um, you know, a word you're stuck on or uh, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, it'll be this little breadcrumb or it might just be suddenly you say a word and it kind of like almost invites a tangent of thought or you go inward as you say something or you notice that when you have that thought, your body started to vibrate and shake a little bit. There's all kinds of little clues like this, right? But as the body and the unconscious mind leaves these little clues, our job is to meet that and connect with that create safe connection with that. It's like a little breadcrumb. And as we follow it, the unconscious mind goes, ah, you're listening. Oh, you're finally paying attention. Oh, you're finally here as a safe space for me. And I'll start to give you more, whether that's another emotion or another you know, sensation or more insight. And it starts to unfold and unpack itself. So you could also think of this another metaphor as like a little, you know, piece of yarn sticking out that if we kept tugging on would unravel the whole sweater kind of thing, right? So we're looking for these little threads, these little breadcrumbs, these little clues, and engaging with that in a really safe, respectful, attuned way. And that's basically how we start accessing, right? So the, the good news here is that the unconscious mind is already communicating. It's probably already trying to get your attention and trying to get help with processing and healing. In fact, if you're watching this video, there's probably a good chance that you're struggling with something or need to heal something and that you already have a lot of charged emotions or stuff up. And that's all, you know, if we follow it, if we follow those threads, potential inroads into whatever it is that needs healing, right? So it's so much closer than we think it is. That's the, really the good news here. Um, but we basically follow these clues. We follow these threads into the somatic, into the emotional, into the cognitive loops or whatever it is. We start tracking that stuff. And as we start tracking that stuff, things start to get clear. They start to move. They start to process. Other layers start to rise. New thoughts, new emotions, sudden shifts into a whole other thing that, that was different than the thing we thought it was, etc. cetera. Right. And this is really how we kind of skillfully, in my opinion, get to whatever that core material is that needs healing. Uh, psychedelics facilitate this process. Psychedelics do make this easier, do make this more obvious. But also the other side of that's true that because psychedelics can cause a lot of distractedness and a lot of kind of tangential thinking, nonlinear thinking, uh, can cause a lot of kind of associative thinking to other things. It's also easy if we're not careful, if we don't know how, to lose the thread and end up on some whole other tangent of thought and basically kind of lose the ability to stay in connection and communication with what's being shown or expressed, right? So there's a certain skill here. There's a certain feel, a certain flow that you have to get the feel for to be able to really do this. But if you do this, it works, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, both sober and on the medicine. Right. So this is kind of the how. Um, if you want to know more about this, uh, you can, of course, reach out to me, inquire about coaching. I have very limited spaces right now. But if, if you feel called, you know, get in touch or check out the free course, which is four hours of kind of framing of, of what I'm describing here and under, 
understanding this kind of structure more properly. And if you really feel called to learn the whole thing and really learn how to self-heal, I've got a full course that's in process that's available at, for pre-sale right now. And you can click on the link and check that out too. So I think we're going to wrap the video here. I've yammered on enough. Hopefully this makes sense. Let me know, does this resonate? Does this hit home for you? Does this clarify? Does this open up an aha moment for you? Leave a comment down below. Uh, I, I really value interaction with you as an audience. And so uh, I really want to know how this lands for you. So anyways, I'm going to go. I got to go work out and take care of myself before a client. Much love to you. I hope you're well. I'll talk to you guys soon.